Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Steven. The cats are all around, but um, none want to be my background singers right now, apparently. But today is October 27th, uh, 2020. And if you remember, today is the day of my home inspection for my uh, purchase of my first home. Well, let's just start with it did not go well. All right, so I was set to expect a long list of a to-do list, basically. Uh, Rachel had definitely prepared me for a report that was going to be very long and seemingly just endless with all sorts of details that had to be fixed. So I was walking into this with what I thought was an open mind. I was prepared, I thought. <clears throat> yeah, that bad. Um, so we uh, went to the house this morning uh, just as Mike was finishing up his inspection. Now, Mike was something else. First off, gorgeous. Oh my God. 6'4", just so handsome and so nice. Oh my God, he was so nice and so straight. <laughs> so no worries there. Um, so straight. But such a nice guy. Um, uh, boy, you know, he charged $300 for the inspection. I don't know if that's a lot or not, but uh, after the inspection was over, I thanked him and I told him to increase his prices uh, because the inspection that he did, I really felt was amazing. Uh, and his deliver his thoughtfulness, so as not to share too much information out loud around the teenagers, the, the parents were gone from the house, the teenagers were in the house, um, but they were old enough to maybe, you know, not want to hear negative things around the house they grew up in, you know, but he was very, very thoughtful to them and very kind in his delivery of pretty bad news to me. So as not to like dash my hopes, but maybe give me some information that would allow me to make a good decision, you know? So, um, so before walking into the house, he shared, uh, two big pieces of information which really pretty much set my decision um, right there in concrete. Um, first off, he said that the um, he could not get to the foundation because of the way the house was built in 1971. It's totally not as they would build it today. So there was no access to the foundation. We don't have basements here in, in Vegas, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a townhouse and it's right between two other houses. There was no direct access to uh, the foundation because of the stucco finish that was applied to the entire house that met the ground, which is not what they do anymore. Uh, but, but he could tell me from his observations that the foundation's probably a wreck. Um, uh, the, as we walked into the house uh, through the back, what I saw as cracks in the patio when I first walked in there and looked, did my little walk around the first time, I just saw cracks in concrete. I really didn't look at them with a really discerning, knowledgeable eye. With his uh, direction, I was able to see that these cracks kind of went in different, there were many different elevations, shall we say, in the patio and then in the house. So he said really the, the foundation, while he can't access it, is really probably uh, really disastrous like bad it's been shifting and slumping and moving in different directions for 50 years and uh, he didn't know whether or not it had it's done but the damage is definitely certainly done uh so he said the foundation is really really crummy um and then the plumbing now one of the known issues the the owner there's a disclosure form the owner has to say, you know, these are the things I'm aware of that are wrong with the house. And that the owners um, included two things. First, the popcorn ceiling, which probably contains asbestos. And then the other one was that they have a sump pump in the kitchen. You know, I didn't know what a sump pump was, but Rachel had to give me some a little heads up in terms of what a sump pump was. And uh, from what I understand, it's there to sort of help in an emergency situation. Say you have a basement bathroom and to stop things from flooding with groundwater, things like that, a sump pump would help stop flooding, things like that. So I wasn't quite sure what they meant when they used, said they have a sump pump, basically. It wasn't a sump pump. I really don't know what it's called. It's in here somewhere. I know that the word sewage is involved, but what they really have is this other kind of pump, 
because apparently, again, he's not a, 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 a sewage inspector. He's a general, you know, inspector. Uh, he was saying we should really get a, a, a specialist in here to look at the sewer lines. But what he suspects is that because the neighborhood is so old, the trees are massive. They're just giant trees. He said they're kind of like icebergs in that whatever you see on top, you're going to see below, you know. And he says what well, chances are what happened is that the tree roots have really um, damaged the sewer system, that the connection from the house to the public sewers. So what they probably did was rather than spend 70000 to fix the sewage problem, what they probably did was spend 10000 in whatever this thing is that he described to tap into the public sewer rather than have the more direct. And again, I'm only, this is like playing a game of telephone. I'm saying what I understood him to say. I'm probably phrasing it wrong, but he said, uh, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, the owners have lived there 16 years with this thing, uh, this pump. Uh, and they said it's been no problem uh, in, in those 16 years. Uh, and so, um, you know, uh, Mike said, the house isn't going to fall down around you. And he said, the, the plumbing isn't going to stop overnight. So if you wanted to live here, these things would not fail you, you know, anytime soon. But the maintenance involved, and I'll tell you some of that, uh, is going to be pretty constant. Uh, and, um, and if you want to resell it, which is the goal, because I don't really want to live in Las Vegas for the rest of my life. Maybe five more years, six more years, and then who knows. But um, I'm going to stay in Vegas for a while, but uh, maybe not in this house. So those are the two big things he said he wanted to share with me. And then he said, let's take a walk through the house. And so we, walk, we walked through the house and he showed me a plethora of other issues. Many of them were complications of the two initial um, issues. Uh, the structure of the house is really a, a culprit for a lot of the wa water damage. The structure, it's a, a flat roof, which is difficult to have in Las Vegas, apparently. It's also kind of a mansard roof. So it's got that flat top with the mansard on the side. Uh, and he said those are the first to leak and the first to burn, which didn't sound very hopeful. Um, but there was water damage pretty much in every room. Uh, in the second floor, uh, every wall seemed to have uh, some manner of water damage. There was um, water damage in all of the, the bathrooms. There were um, uh, organic growths that were potentially a dangerous mold. Uh, he couldn't tell me which one, but he said it's, it's not good uh, in all the bathrooms. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's look at this. Um, uh, he had a, um, a drone camera to get roof shots and all sorts of stuff. And like the overhang, the debris on the hot, the roof, the, the landscaping was affecting some of the issues. The, the, the roof tiles were delaminating, um, bits and pieces that were supposed to prevent water, uh, entering the house were missing. Different flanges were missing. There are no downspouts that should be there from the gutters, I guess. Um, uh, cracking. Um, one of the major issues was that it seemed every part of the house had a slightly different elevation. And when we first walked in the house, when we first walked in the living room, I remember telling Rachel, like, I, is it me or is the ceiling sloped? Because many of the houses in Vegas have like a sloped ceiling, especially these older places. Uh, but this one didn't look like it was sloped, but then I felt a and I was right. My eye was, was correct. I thought it was just like the white ceiling and the huge black furniture throwing me off a little bit. But no, it's like the entire second floor is tilted this way and then this way in other places. It's very strange. Uh, so like no one floor in the house uh, is level. Everything is at different angles. Um, and once he pointed it out, I was pretty aware of it. He pointed out things that I didn't, I didn't look at. And I really thought I had a keen eye, uh, out in the garage, for example, the uh, garage door needed to be replaced, uh, cause it was all rotten on the bottom. But he, he showed me 
like a tracker in the wild. He saw like this pattern on the floor where fine grit, fine debris, fine dust and soil had gathered from running water and pooled in certain spots in the garage. And he says, you can see here where when it rains, it floods in this spot. And this is where the water runs. And it, he was like a, an Indian tracker. It was amazing. Um, and he just showed me all of the places that really were affected by the structural um, problems of the house. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty bad. Um, <clears throat> patio, steaming, water damage, cracks, uh, a lot of issues with the landscaping. Apparently, um, as lush and as pretty as that park like area is, he says that a lot of the irrigation around the house needs, uh, replacing, uh, the grading is poor, which also affects the water damage. Um, the, the, uh, garage roof was amazing. He said the air conditioner and heating unit of the building, he said, were the star of the house, the star of the show. Uh, and he, he said that sort of as a, a joke because the rest of the house wasn't really up to the air conditioner. Uh, and he showed, he took pictures of all sorts of stuff and, and he pointed these things out in real life, but for the report, he actually included photographs. So I, I would really have a good understanding and memories to what the problems were. Um, uh, the garage, the structure was just, they didn't actually even finish parts of the walls. Instead, the um, either the builder or the owner layered bricks up to complete a part of a wall they didn't actually finish. Um, and there was moisture in, in, intrusion there. Uh, the appliances all worked. You know, looking at the uh, the uh, electrical box, apparently the knockouts were missing. I don't know what those are, but um, none of the um, breakers or none of the switches were labeled, which I think is strange. Like, doesn't everyone write like kitchen, you know, bathroom, front living room, whatever, but none of them were labeled. Um, he said there was not a cable that was in the house that was installed properly. Um, uh, there were no C G F C I protection. That's all the outlets, you know, modern outlets all have that little button to push for safety, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but none of it was done. Um, improper break, improper breakers for the panel. Um, there were no carbon monoxide, um, monitors and all the smoke detectors were over 10 years old. The dryer duct was clogged. He said some of these things are totally not, no, no, non-issues, but he had to write them down anyway. Um, and like corroded pipes, like certain corroded pipes under the sink weren't a huge issue, but, um, due to age of home recommended sewer inspection, none of the sink stoppers in the house worked for some reason. Um, apparently the water pressure was too high. I didn't know that could be a potential issue. Uh, he said recommended 60 to 80 PSI and apparently it was way higher than that. Backflow preventer missing. And I was like, what's that for? He said it's to prevent contamination of your drinking water. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, missing drip pan. Um, yeah. And it just goes on and on and on. <clears throat> he said that on average, that Mike said on average, you'd see about 50 issues on uh, a, a report like this. And he said there are many, 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 many more than he would expect. Uh, even though the house is, you know, 50 years old, it's, it's fairly old. So, um, so I'm not getting the house. So I'm not buying the house. The owners, uh, Rachel contacted the owner's agent, the selling agent, and the selling agent said, really, what does he want? Like, what, is, what would it take for him to buy the house? Because they they just want to sell this house and get away from it. And now I understand why. Um, and like they were going to even, you know, give me a, uh, even a much, much better deal on the house. But from what Mike said, now he said he couldn't give me any estimates. He said he couldn't do this. <clears throat> but he wouldn't be surprised if it cost me like 50, 70,000 or more if the work could even be done. Right? So, um, that's half the price of the house almost, you know? So, 
Um, I jokingly told Rachel, I was like, yeah, if they want to sell the house for 50000 you know, if I could get a loan to fix the house, maybe. But um, even then I was joking because I'm not up to that. So um, so the seller's agent is, is like was kind of in a panic because the house has been on the market for, uh, I don't know, over a month now, a little over a month. And in this market, apparently that's a long time. Um, so I'm not buying the house. And um, I don't know how I how I seem right now, uh, but I'm not sure if I already said this or not. I'm not sure if I said this or not. If you're that friend, if you're that person who thinks they're the friend, who feels it's their duty to share the tough love, to say the things that nobody else is willing to tell you, please resist the urge to write anything down there like I told you so please resist the urge to say you shouldn't have gotten your heart set on the house blah 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 please resist can you see me I'm trying to look in your soul right now if you're there's a handful of you out there that really seem to enjoy um offering up some tough love usually I don't care so much I can I can walk past some of that but right now I can't handle it okay so I seem okay right now. I think I seem okay right now. I have been, for the past, it's now 3.48. For the past three hours, four hours, I've been in really a melancholy mood and then crying and then back to melancholy and then crying. Uh, again, I know this is not the truth. I know this is a lie I, I'm telling myself, but once again, here's proof I'm not a winner. Once again, Here's proof that things don't work out for me. Once again, here's proof that I'm just not supposed to be in a nice place. Once again, I'm stuck in this freaking hole of a studio apartment that I just have come to really hate. Um, I know these are all lies, except for the part that I hate where I am right now. Um, and this too shall pass. This too shall pass. And I keep thinking to myself, I keep trying to do a little gratitude list. I have a job right now where a lot of flood attendants don't. I love my job. There's a couple of videos of reminding me why I'm taking a couple of days off, but um, I love my job. I love my company. Um, I'm in a position where I can, I can try to buy a house for the first time in my life. That's a, there's, there's so many things to be grateful for that really don't seem to make a dent in this um, sense of loss I have right now. It's it's funny. I put a, 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 this video is so long already and all I've been doing is telling you bad things. Um, the first house that didn't work, I'm so glad I didn't get that house because you know, that little house is teeny tiny and it went for $191,000. The second house I uh, put an offer on, I still think about that house every day, but the price hasn't dropped. It's still $199,900 uh, plus $198 um, HOA. It's just out, out of my range. Um, and by the way, another while, I, while I'm here, Please don't be that one person who feels the need to tell me, don't do an HOA, don't do it, whatever you don't do an HOA. I have come to appreciate the reason for an HOA. After seeing this little development in the uniformity of the house, no one had like aluminum foil in their window, pieces of cardboard in the window as my neighbors do to protect against the sun, you know. Um, no one had broken down you know, vehicles in their parking, their driveways. The, the neighborhood was pretty and everything was held, was nice. So I understand the need for an HOA now. I don't want to spend a lot on an HOA, but I'm willing to pay for an HOA now. Um, so back to the drawing board. So back to hunting uh, for properties. Rachel's being great. Rachel's being very supportive. Um, she's been through this before. She understands completely. I told her I felt bad because I was wasting her time. And I, I know, like, you just reacted like that just now. She's like, you're not wasting my time. This is my job. And I really, she says she really enjoys me. The fact that we haven't seen each other in a week, you know, she was like, I missed you. Um, 
and we really get along and she really does get she does understand me so um I, the, so i i'm just back to work back to looking for houses and i'm i'm stuck here and i'm going to be stuck here for some time i don't know how long i'm um yeah so i figured i'd make a little video and update you about that um the rest of my day is going to be spent uh, i'm going to give i gave the cat some treats already I'm going to give them some more. I'm going to give them a little bit more treats so that they can potentially, hopefully, leave me alone for a half hour or so. I just need to get in bed, take the clothes off, get in bed, and just um, sleep, maybe cry a little bit. Uh, I'm going to, I bought a couple things today to make myself feel better, if you're still watching. I bought a few things to make myself feel better. I did need a winter coat, so I stopped off at... Um, Marshalls before I got to got to the house um, My winter trench for work is super thin. It's not very warm and they know it So they're allowing us to wear our own winter coats. They just have to be all black So I needed to buy a, a warm winter coat. So I bought one at Marshalls for 60 bucks Since I'm getting my earnest money back, right? Um, I, I bought a $60 winter coat. which seems like a good deal. It's a it's a cute coat. Um, I bought a, ba a bag of gingerbread flavored um, Oreos, which I'm going to uh, probably eat half of today. Uh, I'm going to eat one right now. And I bought uh, some, uh, you can see the Bath and Body Works bag back there. I bought some hand sanitizer in the sweet vanilla bean Noel whatever fragrance. And the Noir, their fragrance called Noir. I really like that a lot too. Um, and a blanket. I bought a blanket, a little gray Sherpa blanket, um, uh, because, uh, for New Englanders, this time of year is like an Olympic sport. Uh, we don't turn the heat on. I refuse to turn the heat on until I have to. Uh, it's an Olympic sport. New Englanders just don't turn the heat on unless you're gonna, your, your life is in danger, you know? So, um, yeah, for nine months of the year, I just sleep with a sheet. Uh, and so I bought a little, um, gray, uh, little Sherpa blanket and I bought some new sheets, um, new blue sheets cause these are just worn. Um, and there you go. So that, that's what my day is going to look like. This is uh, one of those gingerbread Oreos. Ooh, mm. it's naturally and artificially flavored. So it should smell like it smells like gingerbread. Don't buy them. They don't taste like anything. They really don't taste like anything. It's that like they have zero taste. The texture is nice. They have zero taste. And then like 15 seconds after you've swallowed, there is like this flash of gingerbread taste and then it goes away. It's very strange. That's quite an experience. I don't think I'm going to have the rest of the cookie. <laughs> I'm going to leave these cookies down um, um, by the, uh, I hate to say dumpster, because we have a lot of homeless people who go through there. I'm not going to eat. Th uh, it's bad enough I'm not finishing an Oreo, so don't buy them. All right. So there you go. There's a little a little side bonus for watching this video. I got a little review on gingerbread cookies. Look at my handsome cat. All right. I'm rambling now. I'm delusional. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Fly safe. No, there's just, there's a lot going on with that. Yeah. Hey guys, say goodbye to the house. That's the house. Say goodbye. Bye-bye. 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 Bye house. Bye.